Hello and welcome to Sports Update on Trust TV. I am Emmanuel Fashimi. We'll be looking at a whole lot on the show this evening. We'll be looking at the African Games uh, where Nigeria is doing so well, like I said, on the morning show. At the end of today, precisely by 12 midnight uh, or 1 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning, we should be uh, looking at uh, the medal table. And I believe now by then, Nigeria should be able, maybe second or uh, probably second or first on the medals table after today's uh, games. But as it stands right now, medals are coming in, gold medals, silver, bronze are coming in from all of the sports that we have, uh, uh, we have participated in for day four. Today is day, uh, is day four of the African Games 2023 going on in Ghana. But uh, we will be looking at this side of the story from the African Games where the Minister of Sports, John Owan, you know, met with Team Nigeria and all uh, issues uh, consigned, all um, consigned issue and whatever raised, uh, I think um, the, the minister has promised to really um, do what he can do and see that uh, all of the issues that was raised in that meeting uh, is, is um, actually sorted out, and which is a good one. On one, you know, meet team, respond to all concerns uh, raised. Uh, concerns raised. So um, there are some issue, logistics issue. That is what you, you, you I know. Uh, when they say issues, you should know it's logistics issue. Uh, welfare, the athletes' welfare, the officials' uh, welfare and how they can do well in the game what they need they need psychologically mentally they should be ready uh, going into any of the games any of the sports they want to uh, participate in so uh, isaac omedeji is joining me all the way from bida to look at uh, these and other stories on the show isaac uh, welcome to sports update on trust tv this evening uh, you are looking fantastic i believe very soon you yourself you'll get your gold medal from uh, crack ghana because uh, uh, I know maybe you, you know how to play football <laughs> or cricket. <laughs> uh, good, good, good evening, Emmanuel, and thank you for having me this beautiful evening. Uh, my good medal would be probably in uh, observing, observation, uh, yes, okay. because we are observing what is happening and we are reporting it, and that is very good. I see the All African Games is our own Olympics. Uh, it is something that we have always taken seriously on the continent. Uh, Nigeria's participation this time around is not a fluke. Uh, remember the last one in Morocco, we came second. So this time around, uh, we are looking forward to improving on that particular second position and see if we can beat Egypt to it this time around. And oh. for John Eno, I, I'm very impressed because if you look at even what happened prior to the Nations Cup, I mean, prior to the African Cup of Nations, where the Spiders participated, he ensured all issues raised especially concerning welfare bonuses of players, they are addressed. And that is one of the good things you should do to motivate your athletes, but your players. So if there are backlog of allowances from training camps, from previous competitions that are being owed to these athletes, they should be settled. They should be paid. It should go a long way to motivate them. And if they also get paid this time around, even before each of their games, we will say that will not motivate them. So for the minister, I'm happy that he's there on the ground to interface with the athletes, not sitting in Abuja and speaking to them on phone. No, he's actually where the business is taking place, where the action is taking place. And he can see and know from the first hand uh, what is happening to the players. And I hope he can, I mean, to the athletes, and I hope he can mix the athletes again separately without the officials. Yes, but probably sir. he should have informed in each of the sporting categories. So that you can even get the right, because at times these athletes might not want to speak out where the officials are there. So they say, I some things, but it should go a long way to probably have informants who will reliably give him correct information about the status of welfare or these athletes. And this will go a long way to address them and to keep them motivated. Yes, it will go a long way to address them and keep them motivated. On day three, we were fought. Uh, we are fought on the medals table, and by twelve midnight, precisely before uh, early uh, early hours of tomorrow morning, of Tuesday morning, we should be uh, able to get uh, the latest medals table and know where we are. We have seven uh, gold medals, seven silvers, and. Uh, Three bronze medals placing us fourth behind Egypt and Co. South Africa, who are at the top of the summit. Now, uh, do you think after the end of today's event, um, we are going to improve or probably, I don't know, maybe we will stay where we are, probably go up or push down. But 
uh, what's your what's your own take general assessment so far we started getting uh, medals from table tennis and uh, just yesterday evening six gold medals from wrestling and we know we still have other sports to come weightlifting and co where we still have our area of strength yes just because uh, of our areas of strength that we have not finished participating in more medals will definitely come in just as i said yesterday seven gold medals six from uh, wrestling i mean from boxing and one from bad meeting that give us seven gold medals and shoot us up to the fourth position i know it's the number of gold medals you want not the number of medals you want that will determine your position on the table and egypt is not relenting south africa are also not relenting those countries are good they have proven athletes in all sports uh, and nigeria is trying to also you know show strength so i believe we are going to win more medals today and we should be looking at probably consolidating or improving we shouldn't go down we shouldn't allow any other country to top us so he said that we go taught that we'll take it step by step or we don't go beyond maybe below fort Okay, well, we don't go below fourth. Second uh, was our uh, uh, last outing at the 2019 edition in Rabat, uh, Morocco. We were second on the medal table at the end of the games. Still talking about the African games now. Let's look at this uh, particular one where the Lady Stallions, that is the rugby team of Nigeria, women, women precisely, uh, you know, when it comes to rugby, is a very physical sport, powerful sport. Now they are aiming for a better outing at the games. Uh, the, the, their own uh, competition will not be starting until the 18th, though the team uh, has left the shores of the country today for Ghana to settle down ahead of their opening game. They are in Pool B of this uh, particular one of the African games. I know cricket, uh, rugby, they are debuting in the African games for the first time. Now, Isaac Omidiji, for our cricket team, uh, I beg your pardon, for our rugby team, they are looking to end the tournament on a very high note. That is uh, winning a medal, not whether gold, silver, or bronze. But their attention, their, 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 their aim of going to the African game is at least getting a medal for the country. That, that is a very modest one and one within their reach, you know, and not dreaming of getting the gold because uh, we know of the competition among women rugby national team uh, on the continent and we know that our strength is not as good as uh, some of the you know heavyweights on the continent when it comes to female ru rugby so for these ladies they need to take it step by step they already know their strength and they believe this since this is the first edition of rugby in the all african games they can also you know lay claims and see if they can get at least a bronze or oh, silver medal. You know, it would be a, a breaking news if these ladies get the gold. It's not impossible, but I think it's modest to so think modest and to also work towards you know getting modest achievements. Actually, in your first tournament, knowing that there are heavyweights, but that is not taking anything away from these ladies. They can go there and surprise everyone, just as our yellow greens are doing. We look at the group that they qualified from in cricket, where we have powerhouses like Tanzania and Namibia failing to qualify. You know, so it, it, these ladies too can write history in full B of the rugby all Africa games. Okay, let's uh, quickly run over the list of the stallions for the women. Let's look at the list of uh, the players that will be leaving the sh uh, shores of the. They've left the shores of the country as we speak. Batch B of uh, Team Nigeria, uh, they are leaving today. We have uh, Yoha Sources who play for a uh, Do Rugby Football Club. We have Becky Okitiki who play also play for a uh, Do Rugby Club. We have Perpetua Maman, a uh, Co Eleven Rugby Football Club. Bless you, Mude Data uh, Rugby Football Club. We have Augusta FA for a, of a Do Rugby. Rugby football club, we have China Zaba of a Do Rugby football club, we have Akinade Rukayad Gosa uh, Rugby football club, we have Alade Al Yellow Blessing, a co level rugby football club, we have Ahinero Pedro Vera of a Do Rugby football club, we have Precious Felix Lions Women, that is South Africa, we have Fidelia Omogan Onotaro Ospreys of Canada, he play, she plays for Onotaro Ospreys of Canada. Uh, you know, that is uh, the South American. We have Gloria Ezedwe, Oshawa Vikings of Canada. We have Ada Okunko of RLB Canada. We have Achille Agada of Harrogate Ladies. Aruyasu of UK. We have Rosalyn Okpara, Beckley All Blues of United States of America. And for their management, that is the coaches. We have Steve Lewis. We have Aziz Ladipo. We have Jeremy.
Maya a Buwe, we have Princess Alban Ogun Ogwan Eze of Agugo. These are the uh, coaches that will be uh, at least uh, be doing what they know how to do with this team. As a DJ, we have quite a number of foreign stars in this team mixed with uh, home base players, and which is a very good one. The last time out in the Rugby Sevens event on the continent of Africa, they got to the second round of. Uh, the Olympic qualifiers. They just lost the Olympic qualifiers by some weeks. Ago. And now we have a, a quite a, a, a lot of uh, foreign stars. We have about um, we have about six uh, there about foreign stars in this squad. Isaac. Yes, uh, it's impressive. Uh, more impressive is the fact that we have more of home based players in this team. And you know, it's gradually, gradually, the ladies have been getting exposed. And the more they get exposed, the more they have chances to play in better leagues and better settings outside the countries, of, uh, outside the continent. And uh, looking at those ladies, uh, uh, those ones who are foreign based, you know, they are playing in countries where rugby is also taken very seriously USA, Canada, you know, this, and South Africa. You know, you know, South Africa and rugby, you can't, at least on the continent, it will be difficult for you to beat. South Africa to rugby on the continent. So to see some of our ladies play in Canada, USA, and South Africa, it's impressive. And that we have majority of the players playing on, uh, at home is also very, uh, you, know, you know, exciting. And I believe that with time, as I told you earlier, just like the Super Falcons, if you remember, years back, majority of the players that play for the Super Falcons at various tournaments, you see 90% or 95% of them playing on the shores of the country. Now it's a different ball game entirely. Virtually all of them have gone abroad. So it's gradually, I believe these ladies will also have time to showcase themselves in countries where rugby is well pronounced and where they can improve their game. Yes, where they can improve their game. Precious Felix of Lions Women in South Africa is, you know, when it comes to rugby, South Africa is one country on the continent and in the world uh, they are forced to be reckoned with when it comes to rugby sport. And it's a good thing that we have one player uh, who, is, who, uh, who is playing her trade in that country joining the stallions of, of uh, nigeria all right let's leave um, the african games in ghana and quickly talk about this one uh, after this edition the next edition uh, it has been confirmed egypt will be the host, will be the uh, the host of the next edition that is in 2027 and you know when it comes to hosting some of these events uh, uh, on the continent of africa the north africans have a way around it they have the better facility they have what it takes to host a competition for the 2027 african games it will be going straight to egypt i wonder why not nigeria isaac the last time we hosted it was in uh 2003 that is uh 2003 20, uh, 2003 uh here uh, in abuja when it was called koja uh isaac for the 2027 edition it will be going straight to egypt yes and you ask why not nigeria the question is the nigeria showed interest in hosting it and if we have showed interest will you and i have agreed that we are good enough to host it do we have adequate facilities to host all the sports all the sports that's in bracket and that's in quotation all the sports that we participated in but for egypt if you ask egypt to host it tomorrow they are ready because they have facility ready on ground and they are doing well in virtually all the sports I think when I saw that news that Egypt will be hosting in 2027, what came to my mind was that now it, has, it is now even more difficult for Nigeria to win the All African Games. We don't know if we are going to win that of Ghana, now Egypt. Egypt has been a perennial, serious threat to every country on the continent when it comes to All African Games. They won it the last time. They are topping the group, they are topping the better table presently. They are hosting the next one. I'm telling you, they are going to host and win deservedly. <laughs> they are going to host and win, but I can also tell you that we are going to fight it out and actually maybe win this uh, the 2023 edition in Ghana or probably that one in Egypt. We can go there and win. Uh, 25 sports we are participating in, and what makes uh, some of this country to uh, at least win uh, the games is that they come in numbers and they participate in a lot, a lot, quite a number of sports that we are not doing. But this time around. We went to Ghana with 25 sports, 385 athletes. Uh, we are fought on the medals table. Uh, like I said, by tomorrow morning, we should be able to move up the ladder in the medals table or probably go to the top of the medals table. Good one for the African Games. In next edition, we'll be going to Egypt and just brace yourself for that edition because it's going to be a powerful one. We might likely see new sports debuting 
in the African Games, just like the way we are seeing cricket, rugby, and tech ball debuting in the 2023 edition of the African Games. All right, let's uh, leave African Games, let's leave the continent and go straight to Zurich, uh, where we have the headquarters of FIFA. Now, as it stands, uh, they have confirmed Al Ali of Egypt uh, uh, to participate at the FIFA Club World Cup and uh, with two slots. And you know, the remaining two slots will be coming from uh, Asia. After the uh, Asia and uh, uh, the uh, North American, they are playing their own uh, something like uh, uh, the way we play the CAF uh, Champions League here. They are also having their Asian football uh, uh, competition, that is the uh, Champions League going on in Asia and that of the South America. But Al Ali of Egypt, who have won the CAF Champions League for a record 10 times, they are the Real Madrid of uh, Africa right now. Uh, FIFA has, um, they alongside Wadad, have uh, confirmed their participation in the FIFA Club World Cup. Uh, Isaac, I think it's a good news and it's so painful that uh, it's not a Nigerian club that is going to represent the continent. It's, it's not painful, Emmanuel, if you look at it. Because if any Nigerian club is going to represent the continent in that particular show, uh, I think it will only go there and disgrace and embarrass the continent. We have, we have not developed our club leg games to that level of those who FIFA have selected. Alali is currently the highest ranked club on the continent. With that, it's also among the top highest ranked club on the continent. The two are the winning continental I mean, titles. The two have been producing so many players for their national teams. The two are running, a football, they are running football clubs that are standard in terms of welfare, in terms of facility, in terms of structure. How many Nigerian clubs are being run well in terms of structure? facilities and welfare. You see our players leaving Nigeria to go and play in the Tanzanian League. Because the Tanzanian League pays more than even the Nigerian League. The highest played player in Nigeria, and if I'm not mistaken, is Sikuru Alimi of Fremont Stars, who is saying about 1.3 million per month. John Lobo left Ayimba, where he was earning about 900,000, if I'm not mistaken, to Tanzania League, the, top, I mean, the bottom club of Tanzania League that particular season. That was our last season. He left for that particular club, and it was any time three of what was in Ayimba. So the question is, are we ready to do business? No, we are not ready. So the clubs that are ready to do business on the continent should continue to represent Africa. When we wake up, if it was in 2001, 2003, probably I would have thought that Ayimba should be included, but not this present Ayimba. Okay, not the present Ayimba, Wadad and Alali of Egypt, Wadad Casablanca of Morocco, and Alali will be representing the continent of Africa in the FIFA uh, Club uh, World Cup. All right, let's uh, leave uh, uh, FIFA, let's stay in Europe. FIFA, the headquarters is in Zurich in Europe. Now let's uh, uh, go straight to the German Bundesliga. Over the weekend, I think Bayer Leverkusen are, 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 are cruising, getting closer to that uh, title, 10 points uh, ahead of uh, second place Bayern. And it was good news for Nigeria Nathan Teller, who was on target over the weekend that made sure that uh, Bayer Leverkusen uh, get that victory against the opponent. Two nil it ended over the weekend uh, in the German uh, Bundesliga. Let's look at the table quickly before Isaac uh, will react uh, to that. Nathan Teller is uh, in the Super Eagles uh, squad list for the international friendly. We have Bayer Leverkusen who are topping of the ta uh, top of the table with 67 points, 10 points ahead of uh, uh, Bayern Munich, who have 57 points. Second, VFB Stuttgart, third, with 53 points. Dortmund is fourth, 47 points. I have Leipzig on the fifth with 46 points. Etrang Frankfurt, sixth with 40 points. I have Hoffman, seven, 33 points. I have Werder Bremen on the tenth position with 30 points. Augsburg is ninth with 32 points. Now let's look at the flip side of the table quickly uh, so that Isaac can react to it. Uh, to it. And uh, we have uh, FC Hidehem 11 with 28 points. I've damned that 98 is uh, on the 18th position with 30 points. Isaac, I think uh, despite the 8-1 or 8 whatever um, for Hurricane, um, at least a club history for uh, over the weekend also got uh, his um, his fourth hat trick in the German Bundesliga, a good one for him. They tried the opener eight, <laughs> uh, they scored eight goals, but that is not uh, that does not reduce anything from the top of the table. The only team in Europe, I continue saying this, that have not lost any game in all competition. That is Bayer Leverkusen. At least Zabi Alonso is doing a great work, and Atantella, Nigeria Atantella, Nigeria winger, was on target to ensure that they maintain that ten points gap 
as uh, the team stands after match day 25. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm very happy, and I hope the table will remain like this to the end of the season. For sentiment reasons, and what are those sentiments? Victor Boniface and Nathan Taylor. And apart from that, the fact that a club has not even lost any game in Europe this season speaks volumes. The fact that a club will make Bayern Munich look so ordinary in its own league, and put it that way, the league where it has dominated effortlessly, shows that there's something special about that club. So it will be very good. Ten points, 25 games, they say about uh, 13 games to play, anything can still happen. If this is about three games to go, I'll say, oh, it's the end. But they say I have 13 points, I mean 30 games to play. So, uh, not up to 13, not up to 13, but at least 10 games more to go. And that will speak volume very well. If this momentum can be maintained by Bayer Leverkusen, they will win the title. And for Bayern Munich, that H1, uh, I see it that is going to be another 20 points for them. Remember, they defeated last year before beating Mines 04, it goes to 1. So, can we say they are coming back? They're getting rejuvenated? I think Bayern Munich Leverkusen should just not bother looking at their back. Just continue looking at. Uh, ahead of them, and they will get the title at the end of the day. Let us bring this jeans. Okay, at the end of the day, let's uh, leave the German Bundesliga and stop over at the um, Spanish La Liga. There were games over the weekend. Real Madrid continues to dominate that uh, table, continues to remain at the summit of the table. Let's just uh, look at uh, some of the results and probably uh, just flip the first side of the table. Alaves 1, Rayo 0, Las Famas 0, uh, Athletic Bibao 2, Real Madrid 4 against Seth Vigo, and while Real Betis lost to Villarreal 3-2. Let's look at the table quickly. Uh, Real Sociedad also, uh, that was a mix-up. They won their game 3-2. Now Real Madrid remains at the top of the table with 69 points. Girona second with 62 points. Barcelona in his third with 61 points. Atletico Madrid fourth with 55 points. We have Atletico club fifth with 53 points and Osasuna is 10th uh, with 36 points. Uh, Isaac, um, quickly for um, just two seconds, Real Madrid, they dominated their game 4-0 against their opponent and now they have 69 points. Just two seconds from you, Isaac, quickly react to that. Yes, a club that is hungry has continued to show that it is hungry and they are going to win the title. Okay, they are going to win the title. Let's uh, look at uh, to these fixtures. There are games coming up tonight uh, uh, in the English Premier League, and then probably we we'll have one uh, in La Liga and French Ligue. On the, the like Chelsea against Newcastle United uh, later tonight in the English uh, Premier League. All right, Isaac, uh, that is where we are going to leave it on Sports Update this evening. Thanks for joining me on the show. It was a wonderful one having you on Sports Update. Thank you very much, Mano. Okay. <laughs> uh, we wish uh, our Nigerian team in uh, Accra, Ghana, well in all of their outings today and probably tomorrow. Like I said, at the end of today, we should know where Nigeria will be standing on the medal table. That is it on the program source updates. I am Emmanuel Fashimin saying thanks for watching.